Well, welcome in the precious and glorious name of Jesus to the United Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. In this episode, we are looking at the wonderful, mighty ministry of angels, which is your inheritance as a secret place dweller. And I'm going to share insight from Catherine Coleman. If you're going through some major trial situations, stay tuned because I know that this word will really bless and encourage you. And I just pray, Father, in that name, the name of Jesus, we come and we ask of you to give us eyes to ears to hear and a hearing heart. Minister to us through the word. Holy Spirit, come and give us a fresh touch from heaven. Father, I thank you for life. And I thank you, Father God, for breakthroughs for each person, and that this day we will lay hold of the salvation that you have so richly and wonderfully provided in that name, above all names, the name of Jesus. And the church said, Amen. Now, in Psalm 91, which is where we're really, you know, digging our heels in, we know that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. We come under his authority as a resident of the place I live in, the place I pay taxes to because I reside here. I am given certain provisions and certain protections. I have certain rights. And it's the same thing when you abide in the secret place of the Most High. You are given certain provisions and certain protections. In Psalm 91, one of those protections, it says, for he will give his angels charge concerning you to guard you in all your ways. That is one of your rights, and we need to know how to lay a hold of our rights, how to receive the wonderful, mighty ministry of angels in our lives. Catherine Coleman said, God has made glorious provision for his children, provisions to protect, to surround them, and provide for all their needs. And angels play a mighty important role in, this, in God's plan. They are busy creatures indeed. Never forget that you and I do not fight the battle of life alone. And let me underline that. We do not fight the battle of life alone. You may be going through it. And I encourage you as we share some stories here of angels in the Word, that you would see as you go through some of the trials and difficulties yourself and how there's more going on behind the scenes and they would receive what God is doing uh, through the mighty ministry of angels. I want to start by looking at the story of Elisha. Elisha is being chased. They want to take him, and he is surrounded by this mighty army. He is a servant, and his servant looks and sees the army and says, We are surrounded. It doesn't look good, and maybe that's where you're at. The enemy has so surrounded you. You look, and everywhere you look, it doesn't look good from the natural. But we do not fight this battle alone. And there's more happening behind the scenes. We need to have eyes to see, ears to hear, and a hearing heart. Elisha's servant, Turan says, look. And so what was Elisha's response back? Listen to this. He said to his servant in chapter, 2 Kings chapter 6, Verse 16, do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Now, what a thought. The servant looks and said, are you crazy? Did you see this? And a lot of time, the enemy wants us more moved by what we see with the natural eyes. I cannot stress this, the importance of daily, cry out, God, give me eyes to see, ears to hear, and a hearing heart so that we see things from the perspective of heaven. That's why in the secret place, we need to see him. We need to gaze into his eyes and hear from his heart. Listen to this in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 17. Then Elisha prayed and said, O Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Today, Father, open their eyes to see that they may see your glorious provision, that you surround them, that you encamp them, and they are kept. Because we need to see it by revelation. Jacob is told to return to the land of Canaan. He's about to face Esau, and he's coming into the land, and he sees angels encamped 
around him. But it did him no good because he didn't have revelation knowledge with that. You need revelation to understand that behind the scenes more is happening and your confidence is in God's promise and God's word. Go to Acts chapter 5. Here we see the disciples. They've been preaching and they are arrested. Here's another story. Look at this. Maybe you're in the same situation. Now, they get arrested for preaching, put in prison. Acts 5 verse 19. But during the night, an angel of the Lord uh, came and taking them out said, Go, stand, and speak to the people in the temple the message of the whole life. Go back to the place where you were defeated, where the enemy took you captive and said, stop. Where the enemy tried to shut you up. When you get a hold of it, there's more with you. He said, go back. Go back and get the victory. Go back and overcome where you were defeated. Now, look at this. Now let's go to Acts chapter 12. Here we see the story where uh, Herod has arrested James and Peter. He has killed James. Peter is lying in prison and he falls asleep. How can Peter fall asleep knowing that the same fate uh, is, is awaiting him the next day? How can he do that? You know how? Because he remembered the master saying, when you are young, you'll go wherever you please. But when you are old, and he sat and looked at his body and said, I'm not old yet. And we've got to say and realize, God, I've got a promise. I've got a promise from you, and that promise is not fulfilled yet. I'm going forward. My circumstances may look bad, but it is not my job to fix the circumstances. It is my job to believe you. And so you see Peter resting in that promise in Acts 12, verse 17. And behold, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared, and a light shone in the cell. And he struck Peter's side and awoke him, saying, Get up quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. Everything of the natural order has to bow to the spiritual. And we walk by a new order, the order of the Spirit, when you come and abide in the secret place of the Most High. Catherine Coleman said, We are not walking our own way alone. We never are alone day or night. Our Lord made provision for us as His children to be protected. And you've got to receive that. You've got to know that because the enemy tried to deceive you and persuade you that is not true in your case. But as a secret place dweller, it is your inheritance and your right. And we need to understand up and tell the enemy, no. Now listen to this. In Psalm 78, verses 24 through 25. He rained out manna upon them to eat and gave them food from heaven. Man did eat the bread of angels. He sent them food in abundance. Think about that for a minute. There's a day we will be in heaven. And I wonder if we will have an opportunity to eat of that bread, of that manna of angels. I mean, that's a power pack. I mean, if it can cause those angels to have that strength, if it can cause these children of Israel to endure the wilderness for 40 years, there's something to it. If you look at, let me get the chat page here. Catherine Coleman said, God literally opened up the angel's bread box for his people and manna came down for them from heaven to feed them throughout their 40 year trek in the wilderness. God made glorious provision. Think about that. And so you need to understand that God cares for you. God wants to provide and protect you. Catherine went on to say, angels have a ministry. They do not sit around and they do not sit there doing nothing for themselves. For the word of God says, are they not ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who are heirs of salvation? There is a salvation that we are longing for, looking for. And we are heirs of that. And while we are on this earth, pressing for it, we need to understand that we are in a fallen world, making a stand for truth and for righteousness, and we've got an enemy. But the battle belongs to the Lord, and He has sent His angels 
to keep us. They are to minister to us that we might press through and run the race set before us. Catherine said, see, oh, sorry, let me go to this. In Matthew 18, 10, listen to this. See that you don't despise one of these little ones. For I say to you that your angels in heaven continually see the face of my Father who is in heaven. That children, God has set angels to watch over them. And I want you to understand and look back over your life how many times an angel has stepped in and maybe you were not aware because you didn't see. I look back and I call several circumstances. I remember once coming to this junction and the lights changed. I had the green and I was able to turn on. It was a T-junction. I was able to turn and go left. And all of a sudden, the car stopped. And I'm like, who hit the brakes? I was a little frustrated. And I looked and all of a sudden, a car came flying down about 60 miles an hour, an hour, miles an hour right through that red light. Had I not stopped, that car would have gone straight into me, could not have stopped. And I knew instantly an angel had stopped it. I recall once I was in Northern Ireland as a teenager, and we were in Strabat, and we were, there were two, uh, two other people with me. We were going somewhere, and this gang came to attack us. And they got within about 10 feet. And those around me were saying, what are we going to do? And I said, we're going forward. We're just trusting God. And so we keep moving. And all of a sudden, the gang ran. Now, they well outnumbered us. We didn't stand a chance from the natural. And I can't explain. All of a sudden, they ran. Well, the next day, I get a call. And I was told that that gang turn said, we could take the three, but the tall men that were with them, we couldn't take. I didn't see them, but I'm glad they did. And we need to understand that God will assign His angels to keep us if we learn to walk in a holy fear in that secret place and not get offended at the Lord. Catherine Coleman said, Now Satan would destroy all of God's elect if he could, if God would permit. But God charged these angels with the responsibility of protecting His own. If He didn't, and if there was no provision made for our protection throughout our lives, we would fall before Satan's onslaughts as surely as we were born. And the ministry of angels continues all, and I want us to get, the ministry of angels is there continuing throughout all of your life. Hold fast to that. Don't allow the enemy to persuade you. Because God, listen, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. There's been so many times throughout your life that he has sought to take you out, to damage you, to injure you. But God in his great mercy has protected you even when you didn't deserve it. I look at the nation of Israel. God brought them back into the land and they're still in rebellion, still don't believe. But I look at some of the battles they've faced where God has sent angels and protected them because God watches over his word. He honors his word. And so in that secret place, if I align myself with his word, that word will not return to him void. And he will send angels to make sure that that word comes forth. Now, sometimes, and maybe you're in this situation, you do what's right before the Lord and something bad happens. You are walking right and pleasing before God, not walking in sin, and something wrong happens happens. We have to lay hold of this. God, though you slay me, I will trust you. I am walking right before you in that secret place because you have my heart. I trust you completely. Look at the story of Daniel. In Daniel chapter 6, Daniel, faithful, good, a really good man, is praying, but he's not allowed. He is taken captive and thrown into a lion's den. It doesn't look good. And you look at the circumstances, it doesn't look good. Stop being moved by what you see and start being moved by what you believe. Get into the secret place and start worshiping God. The battle belongs to God, not you. Lift up the Lord your God, not the problem. Enthrone in your life Jesus and not your circumstances. Don't allow the enemy to get you a 
offended at God, so you pull back. That's a time to push forward and press on. Listen to this. Daniel, they come in the morning and they find him still alive. And he said, my God has sent his angels and shut the mouths and they have not harmed me inasmuch as I've been found innocent before my Lord. And toward you, O king, I have committed no crime. I'm clean. And because of that purity and cleanness, I'm telling you, and walking in a holy fear, it puts you in a place for God to move. Don't abandon. Don't forget your confidence and boldness before the Lord. Stand firm. Catherine said many times, I have come close to disaster, an accident or some danger hover near. Had it not been for the angel of the Lord protecting and guarding, calamity surely would have occurred. We may not know until we meet the Lord. Of all the many times He has delivered, kept us, and provided for us. But He has. I want you to understand, more is happening behind the scenes than you can imagine. Abide in that secret place. Get your eyes off of this and onto Him. Lift Him up and worship Him. Know Him and trust in His provisions for you. Receive them by faith. Claim them as your right. Listen to this. Catherine says, Protection is a real part of our inheritance as God's children. Angels are busy creatures in God's wonderful universe. They are never said to sleep or rest but are constantly active day and night. The angel of the Lord encampeth around those that fear him to deliver them. They surround us with songs of deliverance. They encamp around us. Oh, I receive that. I receive angels singing over me songs of deliverance, and I receive them encamping them around me because I fear God. I walk in a greater fear of him than circumstances. I trust him and I honor and lift him up. Amen? Catherine said, there have been many times that I've been impressed to do something on the spur of the moment, not knowing exactly why you felt so impressed to do it. That has happened to me too. In such instances, it is possible that we've been led by an angel of the Lord, sheltered or protected by an angel. There have been times when doors have been wonderfully opened to us due to an angel's presence. And again, I want you so to look back and may the Lord give us a revelation of how many times God has so moved, sent an angel to touch, to give us that little hint, do this, do that, to intervene when we just needed it most. Catherine said, what a glorious and comforting thought it is to be to the believer, knowing that God has ordered his angels to not only protect, but also to deliver us in times of trouble. If we could only realize that the armies of heaven are truly at our disposal, if we could believe and know that the heavenly hosts are encamped about us, we would place less confidence in the armor of our flesh, less reliance on physical weapons for our defense, and rest more certainly and securely in the power of God. Because we are more moved by what we see, we are more touched by what we feel, we miss it. And we so hinder the living God and stop. I want to so provoke and encourage you today to get into that place in the secret place of simply receiving and allowing God to move and to minister to you through the mighty angels. To allow the ministry of angels to so do so that God can go above and beyond that His name may be glorified. Now, I think it's so important that we lay hold of Psalm 91. Catherine Coleman understood that too. Because it's in that psalm that we discover the secret, the, the key to this provision. He who dwells in that secret place. Psalm 91 verse 1. Catherine Coleman said, My question now is, are you abiding in God? And does He abide in you? What is your relationship to Him? Where are you living? How are you living? If you do not possess a right relationship to God, the remainder of the psalm, which is Psalm 91, is not yours to claim. Are you in that place of such rich, vibrant, abiding in Him as a resident?
This is my home. This is my place that I built my life. Everything is formed around this, God. I come to receive as my inheritance, as my right as a citizen of heaven, as a citizen of the secret place. I come and I receive my protection, my provision. Catherine goes on then. If you answer yes, however, then you truly say, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. That rich relationship. Because in this secret place relationship, I stay in tune with Him. My heart is in flow with Him. I see what He's doing and I just want to be where He's at. I want to receive all He has for me. I want to glorify Him. And my eyes are not on these things anymore. They're on Him. My heart is set in Him. Oh, the enemy wants to distract you and get you back here. But I'm in His place. And in the trial, I begin to worship. In the storm, I begin to lift Him up. And when I'm going through it and it's challenging, I stand on His Word, honoring Him, knowing the battle is His. The victory is mine. I will finish with this from Catherine Coleman. The mighty Lord of this universe has said, that because you have made Him your refuge, and you've made Him and His truths the place of your refuge, and have made Him and His truths the place of your habitation, no trouble or plague outside of His perfect will shall befall or come near your dwelling. And because He has made these provisions for His own, He gives angels charge over you and me to keep us in all our ways. Amen? Oh, receive that in the name of Jesus. Receive His wondrous and glorious provision and know that they are ministering servants sent forth for those who are heirs of salvation. That's you and me in the name of Jesus. Well, I pray this message has blessed you and encouraged and strengthened you. And if it has, would you please like, share, and subscribe. As you do, you help us with the algorithms at YouTube and Google. I declare that this is the day of salvation, and may you step in and receive all that that salvation means. I would ask, would you consider joining our prayer partnership program? It's easy. Just go to Pure Heart, or sorry, go to God's Channels and Revivals.com and go to the partner page. It costs you nothing. I thank you for watching this video. I encourage you to check out more in the series. May they so bless you, strengthen you, and enable you to live boldly confident for Jesus in this hour. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you.